how are ya? How do you feel about a little get ready with me while we talk all things wedding? I did a QA and a on my Instagram stories trying to feel out what videos y'all want. I was like, gift guides, whatever, whatever. And this one won by a landslide. So as I like to do with normal get ready with me Q and A's. This is gonna be incredibly chatty and in no particular order answering y'all's questions that you asked on Instagram. But then I want to finish this video with going through my budget for the wedding line item by line item and let you know exactly how much I spent on each vendor in each category because that was a question that came up a lot and I think it's interesting. I know that the wedding industry has changed immensely since COVID really and prices have just about doubled and especially depending on where you are in the country and the season you're getting married, things can be just astronomically expensive. So I am trying to do mine not excessively so, but also even cutting costs where I could still ended up being more expensive than I was hoping for it to be. So we can talk all things money. How's that sound? Get ready with me and let me pull up y'all's questions. Like I said, in no particular order. There have been some things that have changed since my initial plan, just as we've gotten further into the, the planning process. And actually that brings me to the first question, have any of the original plans changed? So we are still doing a ceremony and like first half of a reception at one venue that is a dry venue. So we'll be doing ceremony, mocktail hour with sushi, and then we'll be doing uh, first dances, taco truck situation, little casual dinner and donuts and dessert. And we'll be leaving that venue at probably like 8, 8.30 and going to the after party where there actually will be alcohol, late night pizza, outfit change, a lot more just like fun, casual party vibes. Um, so that is all still the plan. A couple things have changed in terms of the bridal suite venue. I had rented an Airbnb to be the rehearsal dinner and where I stay and the bridal suite, but I've actually decided I don't wanna stay at where the rehearsal dinner will be just in case it goes late. I wanna be able to sneak out and go get sleep but the day before the wedding in case I need to. So I have changed where I'll be sleeping that night and then the bridal suite will be where I will be. I'll just have all the girls meet me where I am. Another thing that has changed is we were just going to batch cocktails for the after party and just have it be self-serve which I know the risks of that are people will over drink, but I was honestly okay with it because it felt easy until a bartending service reached out and they offered me their services at like 40% off. So it ended up being not that much more expensive if we were to buy all of the cups and the, you know, the limes and the mixers and whatever and save us a lot of stress. So I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's just have a bartending service at the after party. It'll take a lot of planning out of the way and it won't be that much more expensive because they were very kind to offer me a discount. I do want to say too, being in my industry, I feel so thankful that I've had quite a few like subscribers and just people that know me from the internet reach out and offer to do things discounted. Um, and I've taken a few people up on that offer and I'm really, really grateful for that. So that definitely has helped me A, cut down the costs and B, say yes to things that I otherwise would not have had at my wedding. For example, one girl has a vintage trailer that's a photo booth and she said, hey, can I come just like park it at your ceremony? And I was like, that sounds so fun, sure. Is it something that I would have like sought out on my own? No, but it's something that I think is gonna be so sweet and fun to have and just a little experience that people can do while they're waiting for their tacos. And I'm really, really grateful for it. So I do wanna make that clear and known that some people have been very kind to reach out to gift me their businesses and services. That is just really awesome. Are you and Jordy doing a first look? Yes. To me, the pictures that are really most important are the kind of more couples photos. From the actual wedding, I feel like you don't, you look at them and they're fun, but you don't really do anything with those photos as much, except for maybe post them on Instagram once. Um, and I really want as many photos of Jordi and I and like a scenic location as possible. And so we are gonna do a first look and then like have time for pictures. And then it's great because our ceremony venue is quite small. So then all the bridesmaids and groomsmen can be together while we wait for the ceremony to start. We won't have to figure out how to like hide from each other, which will be nice. Also, a lot of our bridesmaids are married to the groomsmen. Well, not really. We have like all of our um, siblings collectively in the wedding. So the wives and the husbands <laughs> can be together, which is nice. 
What are you most excited to have photographed on the wedding day? Like I said, the uh, couple's portraits are something that I'm really excited about, but all of the pictures that I have penned are after party things. Like high flash Vespa getaway, we will be doing that. More champagne towers, late night pizza, kind of some steamy photos, but that's kind of the vibe. And so I'm excited for all of those photos for sure. How did you find the photographer? So we're working with as many friends as possible for vendors. Also, it just feels more special that way. But we have so many just acquaintances and friends that are creatives and in the industry. So our photographer, for example, is one of Jordy's longtime friends. And we were both saying the other day, I had the meeting with her, Jordy and I were both saying how it's gonna be just like so easy and fun because the photographer follows you around all day. So it's nice to just feel totally comfortable with that person and like enjoy spending time with them. And um, there's not really a gamble on the personality of the vendor. Like if your photographer is someone that annoys you, you are gonna feel annoyed frequently at your wedding. You know what I mean? Um, not that that is something that I feel like would happen to me, but it just completely removes any fear of like, I hope this person is like chill and enjoyable, you know? What kind of dress code are you having guests follow? So to be honest, me personally, I don't care. Um, but I know for guests, they like to know the vibe so that they feel like they fit in with the other guests. So people started asking me and I was like, oh, shoot. Um, I don't know, just like coastal e, not super duper formal. You can be as casual as you want, but not like jeans, you know, somewhere between like casual chill, but nice. <laughs> the groomsmen, I told them the groomsmen will be in like linen shirts, no suit and the bridesmaids will be in just like midi, maxi, flowy blues and greens. And that's kind of the vibe of the wedding party. So I explained that to everybody on our invitations and was like, that's kind of our vibe. If you wanna kind of meet us somewhere in that range. What is the biggest difference planning a second wedding versus the first? I think I am just way more chill. I am not that concerned with the details because at the end of the day, we're gonna be married and that's the whole point. And so I'm kind of just like trusting everybody that we have hired. I think the difference is I recognize nobody's gonna remember the color of the tablecloth. Nobody's gonna remember how many flowers we had on each table. Nobody's gonna remember if we got the nicer taper candles. Nobody's gonna, like all those little things, they really don't matter. Nobody's gonna remember, nobody's gonna care. So I just don't care this time. The day is very out of your control. So like the tighter of a grip you have on what you want, the more chance you'll be disappointed in how it turns out. So if you just tell yourself that's not the purpose, that's not the priority, I feel like you have a greater likelihood of like actually really enjoying the day and being pleased with how it all turns out. But maybe that's just me. How do you decide on decorations? So many to choose from very overwhelm. I think Honestly, I just like simple right now. The venue that we're getting married in is a very simple building, but it is very pretty. And literally with nothing in it, I think it's a vibe. Um, it's just, you don't need to distract from anything. You don't need to cover anything up. It's just pretty and simple and kind of peaceful. For us, the decor we're doing for the ceremony is just four bouquets of flowers on like pedestals. So like two higher, two lower. We're not even doing a formal seated dinner. So there's not even enough seats for everybody to sit and eat because we're doing a taco truck. But for the older people that want to sit while everybody's walking around, whatever, there will be some tables. And like tabletop decor, we're only doing bud vases with some flowers, some taper candles, tea light candles, and like gauze runners. We are using a back parking lot as kind of the food truck area. So we are renting a couple rugs to put literally on the asphalt to make it look less like a parking lot. So that's something that we're doing. I think basically the way I'm deciding on decor is like what's the least I can do and have it feel just still cozy and special. And I do think less is more. Will you be vlogging the day? Okay, so this is my plan. I think what you're gonna be getting is hopefully a day before the wedding vlog, like a rehearsal dinner vlog. I cannot promise you how long these might be. These might be five, 10, 15, 20, 25 minute vlogs. Who knows, anywhere in that range. Um, so I think I will be vlogging the whole day before. And then day of, I will be vlogging. I am hiring my cousin 
to be a vlog assistant. So to basically walk around with a vlog camera, get people's like opinions, get just like random clips throughout the day so that I don't have to be as brain on vlogging unless I like have something specifically. I'm like, ooh, give me the camera. I wanna show this or whatever. I don't remember if I've said this in a video before. I have a huge extended family, like 65 plus people, and we're trying to have a pretty small wedding. So I ended up not inviting extended family to the wedding, but I have one girl cousin on the huge side of my family that is really special to me and feels like a sister to me and I would want her there um, so to make it not weird and to also be able to have her alongside me all day I asked hey would you be hired as a vlog assistant and she'll literally be staying with me the night before so it'll be fun and sweet so you'll get a rehearsal dinner day before wedding vlog you'll get whatever that vlog is that uh, Gracie and I get the day of the wedding and then we have hired a videographer service to where there will be um, two videos produced there will be like the the like normal five to 10 minute video, like the more kind of like highlight reel. And then I think we are also getting a long 20 to 30 minute video later. Those will probably come out sometime while I'm on my honeymoon so that I don't take too long off of posting, but so that I don't have to film any content on my honeymoon. I'm still trying to figure out the exact posting schedule. Um, I think I've mentioned to y'all that I signed a deal a year ago, this is just a side note, to where I'm contractually obligated to post 144 videos a year, which is great accountability in terms of being consistent on my channel, um, but when you're getting married and you're taking a honeymoon is a little intimidating. So I think that that is my solution to be able to take off the full two week honeymoon and not miss too many uploads to where I break that contract. Just some behind the scenes of the weird world of making content creation your job. Has anyone thrown you a shower or a bachelorette party? Um, not in the traditional sense. I for sure am doing a weekend with just my sister and I'm calling that my bachelorette. Depending on how Anna and Kaylee's schedule goes, they both have newborns. We might try to do a little weekend, um, but that is more TBD. I'm kind of leaving that up to them. And if it works for them, I'm letting them initiate it, but I'm not gonna be like, guys, we have to do something because they both have newborns. Is Max in the wedding? You'll have to wait and see. No, just kidding. Um, we are going to bring out Max for at least the after party and I am gonna hire someone to have him on a leash and basically walk around with him all night so that I don't have to worry about like, oh no, where's Max, ah, but that he can be there and um, he loves seeing people. So he'll be really excited. What's the vibe for the flowers? Well, the vibe for the flowers is bright and joyful because like i said the venue is very very simple very very plain i think february in my mind i'm like that is like the beginning i know it's the dead of winter but in my mind i consider it spring even though i know that that's incorrect so just kind of like spring like a joyful spring feel are you doing a wedding registry we are not personally i just don't feel great about that knowing that a I got married a little more than five years ago and B, my job obviously is receiving product pretty frequently. So I feel uncomfortable asking friends and family to buy us physical things, but we did decide to open up a little fund that if somebody wants to buy us a drink or a dinner or an experience on our honeymoon, it's just a general honeymoon fund because we are um, hoping to do some like more specific experiences. So we're like, if you really wanna buy us a drink, we'll take a picture and we'll be like, thanks to whoever for this drink or thanks to whoever for this dinner or whatever that might be. How are you, sorry, this is gonna be the part where I talk really close to the camera because I try to do my eyeliner and talking while I do my eyeliner is very hard for me. How are you and Jordy making intentional time and moments through the day? Um, okay. Since we're doing a first look before, we will be using the mocktail hour between ceremony and reception to sneak off by ourselves and have a little bit of food, just the two of us and kind of be like, oh my gosh, we just got married. What the heck? Wow, that's so crazy. And then between the ceremony and the after party, we don't wanna be the first people to show up to the after party. And I have an outfit change that I wanna do. So we are actually gonna go check into our hotel that we're staying at that night and get dressed and get changed and have a good 30, 45 minutes, just the two of us there. And then our photographer friend is actually gonna meet us at the hotel we're staying at and take some steamy lobby photos or bar 
hotel lobby photo, some things like that in the hotel, I think would just be really fun. How much is Jordy helping with the wedding planning? He's the type of person where he's like, I don't care that much about the details, but please, please, please offhand as much as you possibly can to me. So for example, today he's taking a meeting with the bartenders to go over drinks and whatever. I'm taking a meeting with this company that we might work with to do like custom pizza boxes. So each of us are taking a meeting today. He's in charge of all the music. We're having a lot of friends and family sing songs during the ceremony. Um, and first dances and whatever, even mocktail hour, we're having three friends do a little jazz trio. So he's coordinating all of that. He's making the playlist for the after party. He's all things music. Um, and then we're kind of splitting things. I'm like more of the visual part and then meetings and logistics are kind of splitting 50, 50. How does the whole food truck thing work? Price, making sure everyone is fed timely, etc. cetera. Um, price we will get into at the end of this video. Also my, the lighting changed in my viewfinder and I feel like my bronzer is looking a little crazy. Um, so the fact of the matter is food trucks, there will be a line and like I am aware of that, but same with catering, there will be a line. Thankfully tacos, I think are pretty fast and we don't have a ton of people, maybe a hundred, maybe 120. So I think what we're gonna do is just tell people like, hey, keep an eye on the taco truck. When there's not a huge line, go grab a taco. Everybody just eat whenever. It's not like everybody sit down and eat at once. If somebody eats their taco at six and somebody eats their taco at seven, everybody still ate a taco at dinner time. So I'm not too worried. Are you going straight to your honeymoon or are you taking a few days? We are staying two nights at the hotel near the wedding before we jet off to our honeymoon so that we have one day of recovery and then we have an early flight the next morning. I am really glad that we're doing that because I think if we like stayed up late the night of the wedding and then had an early flight the next day, I think we would be miserable. So it's kind of fun to just like decompress for one day and then fly off to our honeymoon. Are there any expenses that you're incurring that you didn't think about? Honestly, in the budgeting, I forgot to think about vendor tips. We're like right at the, we actually increased our budget another $5,000, which kind of sucks. And we're there now. And now I'm remembering, oh no, we have to tip vendors, of course, duh. And so I need to sit down and do all the math of like how much I need to set aside for a day of tips. What's your hair and makeup plan? Uh, very just like natural, glowy, dewy, warm makeup. Um, and hair, I think I just want simple down, like super loose waves, like honestly, kind of this amount of wave, but professionally done to where it looks a lot better because I have a quite a big veil. And I think that that will just be like a good balance with the veil. But then after party, I want to do a ponytail because I have a big poofy sleeve dress and then I got some long pearl drop earrings. So I want to put my hair up in a ponytail for the after party. I think that that would be fun. Are you writing your own vows? Yes, I need to do that. I'll do that when we get closer, but we are writing our own vows. Are you going to make yours and your bridesmaids bouquets? No. So we are working with a florist um, and she is awesome and giving us like basically smaller than her usual smallest package because there are no bridesmaids bouquets. The only bouquets are mine, the four at the altar and then just bud vases for the tables. So that's all the floral that we're doing. So bridesmaids are actually going to all walk down, just escorted by one of the groomsmen and they're all gonna sit on the front row because I have five bridesmaids and Jordy has like 12 groomsmen. And I don't want that many people standing up there. So just maid of honor Jacqueline and best man will be standing with us. And as you know, the bride hands the bouquet to the maid of honor. So at least Jacqueline won't be standing up there empty handed, she'll be holding my flowers. Um, and that's my solution to that. Um, last question and then I'll get into the budget. Are you thinking differently about personal privacy, what you will share versus keep private. Yes, especially in the planning process. Um, like, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I haven't shared the exact date. I haven't shared too much about like the venue or where we are getting married. Um, I haven't shared where we're going on our honeymoon. I just haven't shared some of the more personal things. I just wanna keep that kind of private till after. And of course, like as we get closer, the date will become more obvious, but just kind of like keeping some things a little more for me now I think has felt really nice. And it's also kind of taken the stress off of it in a weird way. Um, I don't know why, I'm sure there's a psychological reason for that. Makeup is done, let's get into the budget. This is what I'm spending line item by line item. And as you know, 
we are using friends for a lot of vendors. So like, for example, our photographer friend, she gave us her 2023 rates, even though it's a 2024 wedding. So things like that, which is really sweet. So people are kind of giving us little discounts here or there. But one of the biggest expenses was a priority for me. That is our wedding planner. Her package was $5,000. That's for the complete wedding planning. She's on every meeting with us. She's just like handling pretty much all of it which is great. Our venues, the rentals for all of our venues combined is only $3,000, which is really great. Photography, our friend who is giving us her last year's rates, we're doing her biggest package, which has a second shooter and it has um, more hours. And it also includes like engagement and boudoir, but we don't live near her. So we'll see if that all happens or not. I'm not too worried about it. That is $5,000. Videography, I'm actually working with one of Jamie Wolfer's friends. Um, Jamie gave me the hook up there and I am getting a discount on my package because they, I'm gonna be posting it on my channel. So it's exposure for them as well. And so the full videography package, which comes with the little teaser and like the full 30 minute and whatever is $3,300. Rentals, we are estimating about two thousand dollars for tables chairs rugs furniture whatever we are gonna have a string trio this is one of jordy's requests for the ceremony um that are gonna play along with our friends who will be singing as like i walk down the aisle or whatever surprisingly a string trio is nine hundred dollars i would have guessed it would have been more than that flowers the smallest package for flowers oh and i forget she is adding things to it to make it more of a package. Now that I'm seeing this and remembering that we're gonna be doing, there's like beams, we're gonna be doing like an installation on the beams to be able to reach her minimum, which is $3,500. Taco truck, $3,500. All of the other food, the sushi, the kombucha, we're gonna have like some skewers, pizza, all those sorts of things is another $2,000. So all in catering is about $5,000 to feed everybody. And then bartending service, $1,500. Besides all the little things like, you know, getting s'mores supplies, $100 here, marriage license, $100 there, whatever. Those are our big line item expenses. We will be having an expense of after party decor, which we have to figure out. I think we're gonna do like a disco ball installation of like all different size disco balls. And so a few hundred more dollars there for after party stuff. But those are the big things that we're spending the money on. And that is for 120 people maybe coming, we'll see. That's where we're at. All in all, we're trying to stay under 30, which isn't that crazy. Isn't that crazy that added up so fast? At first I was like, we can do it for 20. And then I just kept it. My brain is like turning back on because I haven't really thought about wedding things in a little bit. So now I'm like going a million miles a, a minute in, in my head, but um, I'm excited. We're getting close. We're double digit days away, double digit days away. It's crazy. Just two months ish, give or take until we're there. I'm excited to share more with y'all as we get closer. I love y'all. I hope you have the best rest of your day and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye. So let's take all night, all night, all night, all night.